custom abutments, I almost never use them. Shocked? Well, let's talk about it and let's figure out why this might be the case. So it turns out that if you have an ideally placed implant, that would mean that your access hole is in the center of the cingulum on anterior teeth or right through the central developmental groove, mesial distally split in the posterior, right in the center of the tooth. If that's the case, your screw access hole is in the center of the tooth. So if your screw access hole is in the center of the tooth, you don't need a custom abutment, okay? If you're using a custom abutment, you're using it because you have to go cement retained, right, predominantly. If you're using it because you went cement retained, it's because the access hole is coming out the facial of an aesthetic tooth or out the lingual or the, or the facial or the mesial of a posterior tooth, and you can't make the hole there. It would be an aesthetic concern. So number one, if you get the implant in the right location, 95, maybe 98% of every case you ever do is going to be screw retained, which means you don't need a custom abutment. Now, there is a caveat with tiny teeth, with tiny teeth, upper laterals and lower incisors. Oftentimes, there's not enough room for the screw access hole. In other words, a screw access hole is, is a rather large hole in terms of dental terminology. And if that hole is kind of big, even though it's in the right location, it creates a very bulbous uh, profile to the prosthesis on the lingual, and the patients don't like it. So in those cases, you might need to do a custom abutment because that way you can bring the access hole right out through the incisal edge and make the tooth more compatible with the patient's normal dentition. So that would be an indication for when you would want to use a custom abutment, okay? Another indication for custom abutments is for people who you have high bite forces, okay? So if you say, well, I want more strength, I want more surface area to bond my, my prostheses to the abutment, all right? And in those cases, that makes a lot of sense, but understand this. If you're using a hybrid tie base, which is a stock part, okay, and then you're using, say, a monolithic zirconia crown, and it gets bonded together by the laboratory, and it comes in, and then you screw it into the mouth. You just place it in the mouth. It takes 15 seconds, and you place it, and it's placed, okay? If you have the implant in the right location, then the forces that are being applied to the crown are going to be collinear with the long axis of your implant. And if that's the case, you will seldom see decementation of your crown from a hybrid tie base in most cases. Now, I know that there's people from the podium that report, I, don't, I stopped using hybrid tie bases. They don't have enough surface area. But, but I think that if we were to go back and look at what we're really talking about is the implant's not in the right location. If the implant's not in the right location, all bets are off. All right? All bets are off. Your implant has to be in the right location. And if it is, see how this works? If the implant's in the right location, you're using a stock abutment and a monolithic zirconia crown, that on the monolithic crown, you can control for emergence profile. So you can control for uh, zenith height and papillary fill. You still have all that control. It's inexpensive and it's quick. So the, the, the lab bill to you as a dentist is inexpensive because it's just a stock part, not custom, and you just screw it in the mouth. The minute you go to custom abutment, your lab bill goes up. You gotta spend more money, it's custom, right? Custom things cost more than stock things. So now your lab bill goes up, and now you gotta do a bonding. Now, if the bonding has to be done chair side, that's a totally different procedure. Chair side bonding in the mouth means you have to control for saliva. Right for uh, for efficiency, you're talking about doing rubber dam separation in order to keep it dry, and then getting that on there. And it's time sensitive and technique sensitive, and it's a lot of work. And then you have what? You have the potential for inadvertent expression of cement subgingival. Okay, which is always a problem for people that are like, oh, I have some cement underneath there, and it irritated the gingiva. Right. So if there's no cement used in the mouth, you don't have to worry about it. So another nice benefit about A, getting the implant on the right location, B, using stock parts that are screw retained is that you never, ever have a cementation problem in the mouth with excess of cement because there's not 
cement in the mouth to start with, right? So you see how all of this is really coming together? If you get your implant in the right location, you can use a stock abutment, you can use a monolithic zirconia solution, and you're reducing your cost. And now you can do whatever you want with that, that reduction in cost. You can reduce your cost to the patient so that you become more competitive in the marketplace, or you've made more profit margin. Whatever your predilection is, you just do what you do you, okay? So you do what you need to do for your practice and what you feel right about, but you have that ability to do that. When the implant's in the wrong location, all that changes. You have potential for higher lab costs. You have a potential for higher risks of excessive cement uh, coming out, as well as it's technique sensitive. So placing it in the mouth and getting the cementation process in the mouth, it requires effort and a dry field. And that's more technique sensitive, which means your chair time is longer, which means your production numbers go down. So in my practice, the vast preponderance of all of my cases are fully guided, which means my implants are almost always screw retained, which means that I do maybe one or two custom abutments annually. That's it. There's one thing about custom abutments that needs to be discussed as well with regards to the ability to control for emergence profile. So oftentimes I hear doctors say, well, I want to control for emergence profile, so I use a custom abutment. Well, that's just, that's just not correct. If you use a stock hybrid tie base with a monolithic zirconia crown, you can control for the emergence profile in the monolithic crown. So the crown starts from the top of the, of the abutment and you can control your beautiful, your beautiful contours in the crown itself. You don't have to have a custom abutment in order to control for custom for the emergence profile. Now, when people say that, I just say, listen, you can do that, but you don't have to do that. In other words, you don't have to have a custom abutment to have custom profile of your emergence profile. You can get that in both cases. So that is not a good reason for a dentist to say, I do custom abutments because I want to control for the emergency profile. That's not a good reason. The other reasons that we talked about for using a custom abutment, like for instance, somebody who has high bite forces and you want more surface area, that makes sense. But even in those cases, oftentimes what you can do is if the implant's placed properly, you can do a screwmentable solution. In other words, you can have a custom abutment which has increased surface area. You can do a chair side cementation, but the access holes in the center of the tooth, afterwards you just unscrew it, clean it up chair side, clean up all excess of cement chair side, and screw it right back in. And that makes a lot of sense. But remember, all of this starts with location, location, location. If your implant's in the right location, all of these good things happen downstream. And if it's not, then you got to consider custom abutments and solutions that are more complicated. And then the longevity of the prosthesis is questionable. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. I'm the Smile Engineer, helping you re-engineer your practice.